joke about the salesman, the farmer's daughter. It was. A chicken and a duck were walking alongside the road, but suddenly the duck, duck cross, started to cross over. The chicken yelled, don't do it, don't do it, you'll never hear the end of it. Has anyone ever heard that joke before? No. No. Probably wish you didn't have. Knowing that, we realize it is a joke that can ruin an after-dinner speech because it's been perfect. Tim Rickey will share a far better approach in delivering an after-dinner speech. Please welcome Testmaster Tim Rickey with his speech, Humor is No Joke. What you're supposed to do in an after-dinner speech is open with something funny. I didn't. He did. He tried to get your attention by saying something funny. We had him flip the paper. It was all set up because you, I want to get your attention. And notice that those kind of jokes don't work. What works are stories. Would you agree? Yes. 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 Right? It's stories. And we, we live these stories every day. And something happens, a little discussion, and it's funny, and everybody cracks up, right? Write them down. Remember those stories. I got a hundred of them. <laughs> I've written them all down through the years. So I'm going to share a couple stories with you today that will give you some prime examples of how they can work. Many years ago as a young man, I worked for Sears in Oak Brook, Illinois, also the home of McDonald's, in a three-level store. And the man that ran that store became the president of Sears. A very successful store. I was a shoe salesman. Like Al Bundy in a winter cargo. And in that process, there were 14 of us in the women's and children's shoe department alone, all of us making money. Hard to believe today, isn't it? Well, on one particular day in August, it's after school time is coming up and people are getting shoes for their kids. They're standing in the outside of the aisles, much like you would here if we had, didn't have enough chairs, waiting to get a seat. And when I'm working 12 hours a day in those days because I'm on commission, I don't make money. Well, you have to take a break somewhere. So I said, John, John Sheenan, my buddy, I said, let's take our break. So we go up to the cafeteria, have a little lunch. We're getting on the escalator, coming down, and we look out and we see this crowd. And I said, John, why don't we do the numbers game? He says, good idea. Does anybody know what the numbers game is? Nah, you don't. I haven't told you yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we get down there and we walk up, we get back in the register, and I said, number 27. <laughs> Everybody looking for a number. <laughs> we had to sneak off and sneak off and, and get, grab a customer. The next week we kind of repeat the process. We're coming down the escalator. Check back in again, and Johnny yells, number 15, some woman in the back of her hand, shut up like a rocket. I go over there and say, man, we don't have numbers. She says, I know. I was here last week. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's little things like that that really happen that make a difference. Story number two, my buddy Al worked up in furniture in a third level. Yes, Sears used to have furniture. And he had a problem. Al had only hair here. He was bald. And in those days, that was very sensitive for people. They just, they didn't like people noticing that. They felt embarrassed. And today, it's okay. You know, you shave it all off. It's pretty cool. But I want to have a little Thank you for that. I'm up in the cafeteria. There's Al sitting there. He's down and out. And I said, Al, what's the matter? He said, he said, I'm just, I'm fed up. I said, what's the matter? He said, I get tired of people coming back, my customers, and saying, um, the, the bald guy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I, I just don't like it. I said, well, Al, you'll figure out something. A few weeks later, I go into the cafeteria, sit there, and he smiles, what do you think? I said, what do you mean? My mustache. Oh, hey, yes. Now, start today, I'm going to have you come back and ask for the guy with the mustache. <laughs> and I said, that's a good idea, Al. Yeah. Well, a few, a few weeks later, I come up to capture you again, and there's Al down and out again. I said, Al, what in the world's the matter now? He said, well, it worked and it didn't work. That's what he means. He said, 
well, you know, it's the mustache he had. He said, now they come back and ask for the bald guy with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> no winning, right? <laughs> Story number three. <laughs> when my daughter was two years old, she had a Winnie the Pooh room at home. I got all of the stuff to make it a Winnie, including the tree with the lights. You remember that, the Winnie the Pooh collection at Sears? And I got it from display because they went through displays and traded them out. They let me take them home. And she had her little Pooh Bear, about this big. And she just loved the little Pooh Bear. She went to bed with it, she slept with it, she'd take it everywhere, and we couldn't leave the house without a Pooh Bear. Well, I happened to make a little arrangement with my old boss, who is now kind of a big deal at Sears headquarters, and I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I called him and said, Bob, can I get that Winnie the Pooh costume that Sears uses? It's the same one Disney was, it was the big round one, with the word honey on top, which is where you see out, by the way. That's how they visit. And there's sticks inside to move the hands. Guess why I know this, right? I have been the Pooh Bear. <laughs> so, so I arranged for that costume to be shipped up to Green Bay for a promotion with Northern Shoe Company. They produced all the shoes for Sears in those days for the, for the kids. And when it got there, it was on a Friday, I was off and I, and I realized, you know, we got the costume down there. My daughter can see the real Pooh Bear. This is going to be fantastic. Two years old now. So the wife and I and, and Heather went down to the store. I slipped away, went in back to the alteration room, put on a costume and come found me down. <laughs> and my daughter takes one look at me, who, and starts crying. And crying and crying. And I did the unforgivable thing that Disney characters do not do. You don't talk, right? Anybody been a Disney? Nobody's been a Disney character. Well, for your information, you don't talk. And I lost it being a dad. I said, it's okay, it's daddy. She started screaming. <laughs> she started screaming. And my wife says, what's the matter? I said, what do you poop? Ain't daddy. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, my point is that we have funny every day if we just take the time to put them down. And when you're going to be a keynote speaker, you're an entertainer, not a speaker. There's a big difference when it comes to that. You're there to entertain them during dinner. They don't want to think serious. They want to have fun. So remember those little bitty speeches, the little stories you put together, a minute or two, or even less, and get out there. Remember that it's not a joke, it's a story. That's what I meant.